Hi Fox, how are you doing? Today I'm going to share with you a game I saw in the European Team Chess Championship uh, played a couple of days ago. Uh, this tournament is being played in Poland at the same time as this World Championship match in Chennai. Very interesting games playing there. We are being played there. Lots of strong GMs, so definitely worth uh, watching if you have time, if you can. The game I'm, showing to, I'm going to show you is, uh, is the top game played in the match between Croatia and uh, Israel. Uh, white players, uh, white player is Ivan Saric from Croatia and black guy, the black players guy is Tamir Nabati from Israel. So there we go. e4, e5, bishop c4, some standard moves defending the pawn on e4, knight c6, knight f3, bishop c5, very normal developing moves. Nothing really strange going on, short castle. Now h3 with some ideas of preventing possible pin with bishop g4 or even the knight could go there in any moment. And, so, and giving some room to the king in case he needs it in the future. The knight could go there someday as well to relocate to g4. h6 with, such, which, uh, with some similar ideas. c3 preventing black from playing some pieces to either d4 or b4 supporting this d4 advance and also allowing this uh, bishop to retreat in case it needs d6 uh, protecting a central pawn and uh, uh, opening this diagonal to develop this bishop probably to e6 a typical move in this kind of structures when black wouldn't mind at all to recapture with the f pawn and double pawns here as it would be controlling lots of central squares so rookie, rookie 1 a6 to play probably a b5 and get some uh, get some uh, space there and probably hide this uh, bishop on a7 if needed. Bishop b3, knight, is, knight a7, uh, strange looking move for me, not really understanding the idea about this. Uh, honestly speaking, I don't know that much about the theory of these lines, but I guess something like a knight g5 in the future or maybe queen king h8 that prepare some kind of f5 not really sure just to show you that bishop a6 was always possible and if black recaptures with the pawn he doesn't mind at all because he's controlling some central squares the only uh, drawback is that he's uh, weakening a, li a little bit this this g6 square but anyway uh, knight, knight a7 was played and now d4 advancing in the center bishop a7 and he takes e5. Of course, lots of alternatives here. Equally uh, valid game, uh, valid moves. Bishop a3, knight a3. Although d5 doesn't seem that good advancing here because after something like knight e7, suddenly black could take easily the initiative with something like f5 with all these pieces targeting the white king side. And black could get some attacks similar to those positions arising from lots of kings in the defenses. So d takes e5, black recaptures with the knight, he could over even take with the pawn. At this point bishop e3 developing a piece, queen f6 mm, developing the queen, although not, not, right, mm, not that sure if that's the best square for the queen, but okay it's a move, not that bad for the time being. Knight bd2, and here knight d3, the first dubious move of the game. It seems black is going to take some material because he's attacking the rook on e1, the pawn on b2. But white has quite a, a lot of development here. So this pawn on e4 and the queen on f6 is going to make to let him uh, play some attacking, some tactical um, combinations, starting with e5. Black takes with the pawn as, because if he takes with the knight, isn't his position isn't that good either course taking with the queen is going to fall into some nasty discovered attacks and after taking with the taking with the pawn bishop takes rook takes and after knight f3 white is probably taking the pawn back and even he if he doesn't uh, this couple of misplaced pieces should uh, give white at least a little bit at least a little bit of compensation for the lost pawn so after take uh, after e5 Black recaptured with the pawn, but now knight e4, discovering an attack on the knight on d3, and attacking the queen with his own knight as well. 
queen d8 and now bishop takes a7 uh, at this point black is already in some trouble and he tries to mother the water with uh, knight takes e1 let's take a look what would happen if he takes on not that one but if he takes on a7 directly the point is uh, being the point being that white will always have these kind of tricks on f7 bishop take rook takes f7 and now knight takes e5 attacking the rook attacking the knight note that the knight is pinned the queen on d8 is hanging now the rook now that the rook on is on f7 equally bad is to take with the king because after knight ta queen takes e d3 sacrificing the queen for the time being knight takes e5 white is getting the uh, the queen back winning a pawn and probably the game because this place the these uh, two pieces are not ideally placed so black took only one trying to mother the waters and get something in these tactical combinations but equally and uh, white ta takes on f7 checking look look at this variation black white White will have nothing if he takes only one, taking on a7, in fact he is down an exchange, he takes the pawn back, but this king can be hardly good for white, so he takes on f7, check, king takes f7 is played, obviously the rook takes f7, the queen on d8 is hanging, so king takes f7, knight takes e5, check, king e6, the queen, king is forced to go on a dangerous trip to the center he, ca he just cannot go back to g8 because after some flank the queen b3 check well the queen could be placed in between but after taking that this is a checkmate so the king goes after check on e5 goes to the center king e6 now bishop d4 was played here note that this bishop ha uh, this knight has no any way back then taking on g2 probably sacrificing himself for a pawn uh, anyway, the computer was suggesting another move, which was uh, apparently stronger. Queen g4 check, a very nice move. The king takes e5, queen takes g7 check, and if uh, well, knight f6, putting something in in between. But knight takes f6. If queen takes f6, bishop d4 check, taking the queen. The bishop suddenly comes back from a7, and if something like king d6, knight e4 check, king d5, d1, and the rook takes back the bishop, uh, the knight on e1, and just take a look at this uh, uh, bear king in the center. This play, uh, this, uh, this uh, pieces aren't looking that great. All, in, in fact, all of the back pieces are in the first rank, so this can't be good for black. But okay, bishop d4 was played, which is also good. At this point, knight f3 check was played, giving the piece back, obviously. Uh, taking on g4 wasn't that good, because white would check and take with the queen. Now have some kind of discoveries here, winning some tempos. So knight f3 check, the knight took back on f3. Queen d5 attacking the knight on e4. Now bishop takes g7. Here, rook f4 was played. The queen cannot take that knight that easily because something like queen b3 check if king d7 rook d1 check and obviously if he stays in the e-file uh, knight uh, rook d1 rook e1 would follow uh, just pinning the queen so something like king e7 rook d1 check king c6 here a knight comes in and checks king c5 queen d uh, uh, rook d5 check and after the queen takes on d5, queen b4 is a beautiful checkmate to the queen. Another option was probably to take on d1, but after this, rook e8, just getting out of the uh, bishop's way. Bishop takes h d taking on h6, uh, white has lots of material, and more, um, which is more something which is more important, the king is on the center these pieces are not developed at all so black must be completely lost here lost here so after bishop takes g7 black went on to play rook f4 attacking the knight twice 
bishop uh, the knight, uh, the knight went back to g3 and now knight takes f, uh, rook takes f3 not really sure what was black thinking here if just probably trying to double up these pawns hope for uh, some end game some simplifications where we he would have an opposite colored bishop end game when uh, this couple of pawns wouldn't be that useful for white to win probably somehow practical idea but the engines uh, say it's not uh, enough to equalize the game instead something like taking on d1 rook takes e1 but anyway this seems to be hopeless but okay it went with uh, rook takes f3 g takes f3 now queen takes d1 and rook takes d1 white is two pawns up and black has more or less get what he was uh, looking for with this rook sacrifice on f3 he's going to probably have an opposite colored bishop endgame and a doubled uh, some doubled pawns here for black on the f, uh, f file which potentially could be uh, not that useful and well would make it my black's life a little bit easier but as we will see white will manage to win this game he will uh, play very uh, concrete moves some technical job will be done king f7 attacking the bishop bishop takes on h6 and the bishop takes on h3 now rook d4 bringing the rook to the center controlling it almost everything bishop e6 a3 uh, just not letting black take that one rook g8 uh, pinning the knight king f1 getting out of the pin b5 some nothing really special move moves bishop f4 attacking on c7 knight f3 trying to get that f3 pawn and create some activity with uh, with the knight the knight on the h7 square wasn't doing that much so bishop g5 now it's this exchange now we don't have any more that opposite colored bishop endgame and now f4 just advancing the pawn rook g8 f5 keep advancing check on c4 king g2 king e7 just to avoid probably white to get on d7 with the rook king f3 advancing the king c5 attacking the rook on d4 rook g4 now exchanging rooks would probably be ho uh, hopeless for black so he plays rook d8 knight e4 attacking the pawn on c5 rook d1 check and going on to the seventh rank uh, trapping the king on the eighth on the board uh, on the on the edge of the board and attacking the c7 uh, the c5 pawn bishop d5 just trying to set up a little trick because it is pinning the knight bishop d5 sorry and uh, it's pinning the knight and uh, black is willing to play a uh, rook e1 uh, getting the knight for free because the rook will not be able to attack to protect it from e7 but of course uh, white can get uh, rid of that threat taking on c5 now king gets a little bit more nearer to the center but never mind these pieces are exchanged black is trying to get some pawns at least but b4 there are lots of ways of winning this i guess rook e2 trying to go for that one f6 check king f7 rook, S, rook c7 check king f8 there are not much uh, interesting alternatives if the king takes on f6 rook takes uh, rook c6 check taking on a6 and protecting on a3 so king goes to the edge of the board once again king d5 rook takes f2 and after uh, rook c6 protecting uh, on, f, uh, on f6 attacking on a6 the king is going to come here and take all these pawns there is absolutely no hope for black and here Tamir Nabati resigned just let's take a look at this capture just to see that taking on a3 wasn't nothing as well because I'm like king e6 threatening checkmate in one king g7 f7 check and if the black piece goes to the uh, h file checkmate um, uh, promoting and if king g7 rook c8 and it's going to promote anyway so well this didn't happen but this was absolutely losing as well 
So he took, took, and uh, rook c6. An interesting game. Some some early tactics on f7 in the center, and okay, not really um, not really common to see these uh, tactical um, combinations that early in the game, but. This was not an ex exception. It seems there are lots of funny games, fun games here on this European Team Chess Championship, and I'll try to make some more videos on them. And see you there. Thanks for watching.